Nighttime in Kakadu National Park. But this is no pleasure cruise. We're travelling with a group of park rangers and researchers. And we're out to catch something very powerful and quite dangerous. It's not easy to humanely catch and pull on board half a tonne of crocodile from the back of a small dinghy, especially when the croc isn't happy about it. This one doesn't know he's quite safe, protected by law in Australia. That very protection is the reason we're here. of saltwater crocodiles was made illegal only recently, in the 70s. Before that, it was open slather. At least 140,000 were killed in the decades after World War II. For their skins or for sport, or simply because we were afraid of them. And it wasn't just in Australia. In every habitat, from India through Indonesia to Australia, the population crashed. Eventually, Australia declared crocodiles a protected species, and here, at least, the slaughter stopped. Today, saltwater crocodiles are found all over Australia's northern coastline. And everywhere, the population is growing. In Kakadu, there's at least 3,000 salties, maybe more, and they've become a major tourist attraction. Every year, more than 220,000 people visit the park, bringing an estimated $250 million into the Northern Territory economy. It's a textbook example of how conservation can create wealth. But there's one major catch. These animals can kill you. And from the safety of a tour boat, that's easy to forget. This was a boating accident here. Yeah, particularly in an evening or something like that. What would these, these tourist friendly, which means uh, very little respect for humans as a, as a predator, what are these crocodiles going to do when some people really panic in the water? And everyone thinks about that that knows crocodiles and, and, uh, and they just wonder what, what could happen in the worst possible scenario, you know. This sort of scenario often prompts calls for the larger crocodiles to be culled from Kakadu. But the National Parks and Wildlife Service disagrees. We really don't understand enough about crocodile dynamics, population dynamics. And if we started to pull out certain size classes, the bigger animals, for the sake of thinking that we will be protecting the public by doing this, one, we don't know if that is the case at all, and two, I think a lot of people who have worked in this field for many years feel that it is the larger animals that keep the smaller ones in check. They'll eat them, they'll just generally keep them in line. And if you got rid of those larger animals, well, then you could see a huge increase in the smaller size classes coming through. So in the end, you'd end up with a lot more bigger animals. There's so much we don't know about crocodiles. That's why Carol Palmer and her team from National Parks are out tonight, gathering the hard scientific data to better understand our future with the crocodiles. OK. Take the head. If the big ones do regulate the others, how do they do it? By killing them or by forcing them to emigrate? How fast are they breeding? And how many are reaching adulthood? These moonlight expeditions are also a way for park rangers to revive their skill in handling crocodiles. Skills which haven't been needed for a long time. 
those skills of catching and handling animals had actually left the park and um, we felt that it was time to uh, start it all over again. They're very important skills and they're skills that do take a while to acquire. I mean, they're dangerous animals, they're big animals. And um, from our point of view, we want to uh, be able to um, handle animals, look after them and put them back in the water knowing that they're going to uh, survive. Crocodiles sit at the top of the food chain. Anything which enters the kakadu environment ultimately ends up in the crocs. These samples of flesh are part of an experiment to see if the crocs can be used to monitor the health of our northern waterways. So we'll just um, put this plastic skin on. And finally, two small scoots, or osteoderms, are cut from the tail. Right. These are what people call scoots, and we're uh, individually marking the animal so that if uh, people are out in the field and they've got binoculars, they'll be able to individually identify the animal. So it's a bit like a barcode. <laughs> exactly. It's just so that we'll know what this animal gets up to if he moves long distances, mm -hmm. um, if he starts to um, get a bit cheeky, anything like that, we'll be able to tell. Yeah, what do you reckon? Oh, we'll yeah. let this one go. And... Oh, I'm just going to look at it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just about ready to go. Isn't it? Yeah. Catching no and idea. releasing a crocodile safely isn't something you ever take for granted. Now, these people have got it down to a pretty smooth operation, but it's still a very unpredictable animal. Magnificent, but unpredictable. And the danger is always present. And right now, it feels very present. Shortly after we recorded that, my fears were proven dreadfully real. Got my hand. I'm in trouble of bleeding the fingers. Grab the head, somebody. We've got a lot of broken fingers. Which way? Under him. Just let him go? Uh, no, not yet. Just hold on, sorry, Dave. No, it was my fault. Which way you want to go? Now, the left. Are you okay? Yeah. Just get that. Someone get a rope up here. Dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. Come on. Where, where, where's the rope? Just cut, just cut the hind. Just cut it. Just cut the feet. Yeah. Sit down on the edge there and just relax. Okay. So that was really good work getting him off that quick. I could have gone in with him. Yeah. End up killed. OK, Dyke, you just start the boat. Let's go back. You want to get Bucky going? One back more first, inch, and down. Dave Limner would have had his whole hand Dave crushed instead of only two long, fingers. Once he was held, he opened his mouth. Now, if he hadn't opened his mouth, and, and then I recall giving a expecting my hand to fall out of his mouth, it didn't because the tooth was through the finger. So I had to lift it off and bring it out. Well, it's, that sort of tug could have easily provoked another shot and a couple more fingers could have gone or any could have grabbed my hand or anything. You can see how streamlined their bodies are for the water. Yeah. It's superbly adapted for the water, the crocodile. Crocodiles are the only predator in Australia capable of killing a human being on land. Statistically, it's still very rare. In fact, you've got more chance of being killed by lightning or a bee sting. But nature is never static. Just because we decide to conserve an animal or environment, it isn't going to stay exactly the same forever. Few people would dispute the benefits of protecting these magnificent creatures. But until we know their population and range has finally stabilised, there will always be the chance of an unexpected and unfortunate encounter. <laughs>